The demand supply situation for downstream copper in India is going to be huge. Seeing their opportunity is becoming a superpower, and the one thing they lack is critical minerals. Today I'm joined by Mark Hepburn, the Managing Director of Castile Resources. Mark, I understand that you've just returned from a trip to India where you were part of a delegation of critical minerals companies. What was the purpose of the trip? Hi, Dan. That's right. Thanks. Yeah, so the Australia-India Business Exchange is Austrade's primary method for marketing Australian companies of all types, not just resources, tech, etc., uh, into India, because now they are the most burgeoning uh, country in the world. They're 1.4 billion population. They've overtaken China. They're having this incredible movement of wealth moving into this middle class and becoming this mass consumer society. So with the things that Australia has, which is obviously resources and those sorts of things, it's a very obvious market for Australia to be, be strongly messaging and marketing into why in particular was Castile selected to be part of this critical minerals delegation to India? Well, a couple of years ago, we made the decision to go into downstream processing, which meant that we had 99% copper, 99% cobalt. We had gold as, a, um, as another large revenue factor for us and also a magnetite product that we would be processing through to a 96.5% product. So we're here in Australia with these downstream end user metals sitting in our yard, which means we're not depending on an overseas smelter. We can decide who our customers are. It may be that we keep it in Australia for some of the uses that are here. But again, when you look at a country like India, which has enormous demand, again, for end user, end user critical minerals, we would be able to supply them and hopefully perhaps even get a premium. But the important thing is, we are in control of our product. So the Australian government has made has also taken a strong focus now on downstream critical minerals processing. We were onto it two or three years ago. Everyone's catching up, but it's it, the messaging is very clear. Downstream is the way to go. Well, that's brilliant support from the Australian government. But in terms of India, how much copper do they need to um, achieve their net zero ambitions? India are sort of in a different case to, to the 2050 basket of countries in that they've said, and, they, and the good thing is they're being realistic about it, it's going to take them until 2070 to hit their, their decarbonisation goals. Included in that is demand for 3 million tonnes of copper per year from the year 2030. Now, they've got a couple of fantastic copper producers in there, Hidalco and Adani are both copper producers. But at the end of the day, they'll only about be able to produce about 25 to 3% of their net requirement of that 3 million tonnes. So the demand supply situation for downstream copper in India is going to be huge. And you met with many of these uh, end users of critical minerals, which I'm sure is very, very interesting. What was the messaging to you as a supply side um, company? So the clear messaging we got is that India's now realised that there isn't much copper around anymore. Anything that's being produced is being contracted and has already been paid for three or four years before it comes out of the ground. The majors are saying they're not going to increase production. So given that India was late to this, I guess, to the, the decarbonisation message or the search for critical minerals, they were late to the party. They've now realised that they're behind. And so they are looking up now to go upstream for them and make sure that they are locking in their supply chain of these critical minerals, or really they don't have a business. You've got to remember we were talking to companies that are involved not just in the decarbonisation sector, a huge demand for vehicles, for scooters over there, obviously in the batteries that are coming along, but there's also a massive construction sector which consumes an enormous amount of copper. And there is, there is, I tell you, there is no slowdown in, in India with construction. It is going mad. I mean, it speaks to the massive uh, opportunity, I guess, ahead of you. Um, was there any final comments that you had on the on the trip or, or insights to share? Well, the great thing is, you know, a company like Castile, which is still a development company, is getting attention from these huge, if you like, uh, conglomerates. And the great thing is they're starting to realise that the critical mineral stage has not even begun.
And that's the thing. Despite what everyone's saying about the decarbonisation process having begun, you've got to remember countries like China who are leading the way still only have 3 or 4% of their total car fleet, which is electric. So there's a lot more to go. And when you join India into that, um, they're, they're seeing their opportunity as becoming a superpower. But the one thing they lack is critical minerals.